Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. For the last several months, the White House has been increasingly interested in and engaged with artificial intelligence. At the beginning of May, Vice President Kamala Harris met with a number of CEOs to discuss how they could collaborate with regulators to move AI forward in a way that was taking advantage of its benefits, but also recognizing the risks and challenges it presented to society and the economy. And part of the initiatives that they announced around that was that they were going to be working with a number of leading AI companies to try to come together around a set of voluntary commitments. The goal of this wasn't to replace congressional legislation, but simply to try to keep things moving and come to some agreement with industry around some common sense measures that could be implemented more quickly. Today, Friday, July 21st, the White House released a fact sheet. The title reads, Biden-Harris administration secures voluntary commitments from leading artificial intelligence companies to manage the risks posed by AI. The goal with these voluntary commitments is to help the companies involved move toward, quote, safe, secure, and transparent development of AI technology. These commitments they write, which the companies have chosen to undertake immediately, underscore three principles that must be fundamental to the future of AI, safety, security, and trust, and mark a critical step towards developing responsible AI. As the pace of innovation continues to accelerate, the Biden-Harris administration will continue to remind these companies of their responsibilities and take decisive action to keep Americans safe. So first of all, let's talk about the companies involved. They include Amazon, Anthropic, Google, Inflection, Meta, Microsoft, and OpenAI. Now, this is kind of the companies that you would expect. From a big tech perspective, Apple is absent, but then again, they're keeping their AI approach close to the vest, even if reporting is starting to leak out about it. One potentially interesting participant is Amazon, who so far as well have been a little bit circumspect about their long-term plans with AI, even as they've released things like a developer sandbox for people to use AI models integrated directly into Amazon Web Services. So what are the commitments that these companies are making? The first category relates to ensuring products are safe before introducing them to the public. First, the companies commit to internal and external security testing of their AI systems before their release. The testing, which will be carried out in part by independent experts, guards against some of the most significant sources of AI risks, such as biosecurity and cybersecurity, as well as its broader societal effects. Second, the companies commit to sharing information across the industry and with governments, civil society, and academia on managing AI risks. This includes best practices for safety, information on attempts to circumvent safeguards, and technical collaboration. So you can see here, one of the key themes is to not let the development of these technologies be complete black boxes. The administration wants there to be more eyes on any given system before it gets to the public. And what's more, when a company learns about how to mitigate a risk, they want that knowledge to flow freely. The next category is building systems that put security first. The first commitment in that area is that the companies commit to investing in cybersecurity and insider threat safeguards to protect proprietary and unreleased model weights. These model weights are the most essential part of an AI system, and the companies agree that it is vital that the model weights be released only when intended and when security risks are considered. One of the big points of discussion earlier this week when Meta announced Llama 2 is that if they released the model weights, then some people felt that all of their safety measures were for naught, because people with malicious intent could simply fine-tune around them. The second security-first commitment is that the companies commit to facilitating third-party discovery and reporting of vulnerabilities in their AI systems. And this basically says that that external testing happens even after a model is live in the wild. Quote, Some issues may persist even after an AI system is released and a robust reporting mechanism enables them to be found and fixed quickly. The third category of commitments is around what the White House calls earning the public's trust. First, the companies commit to developing robust technical mechanisms to ensure that users know when content is AI-generated, such as a watermarking system. This action enables creativity with AI to flourish, but reduces the dangers of fraud and deception. Broadly speaking, this is one of the things that I think there is the most agreement around, that we need ways to allow people to differentiate what is generated by AI versus real in the way that we classically understand that word today. Next, the companies commit to publicly reporting their AI system's capabilities, limitations, and areas of appropriate and inappropriate use. This report will cover both security risks and societal risks, such as the effects on fairness and bias. Third, the companies commit to prioritizing research on the societal risks that AI systems can pose, including on avoiding harmful bias and discrimination and protecting privacy. The track record of AI shows the insidiousness and prevalence of these dangers, and the companies commit to rolling out AI that mitigates them. One of the things that has been really clear in the White House's engagement in particular with this is that while there may occasionally be some mention of those bigger, broader risks, there's definitely more of an emphasis on the stuff that is politically hot button right now. There is a great concern that if the information that is training these systems has inherent biases, then those biases will be passed on and even amplified in AI systems. 
This is also part and parcel of why you're seeing legislation being introduced, for example, to prevent employers from using entirely AI systems for making hiring decisions. There's just too much of a concern that those systems reflect the worst, not the best parts of their training. Finally, to sort of wrap it up with a nice bow commitment, the companies commit to develop and deploy advanced AI systems to help address society's greatest challenges. From cancer prevention to mitigating climate change to so much in between, AI, if properly managed, can contribute enormously to the prosperity, equality, and security of all. This is obviously what these companies were already doing, and I think the reason it's here is to reflect the fact that the White House is trying to send a signal that they don't want to prevent the development of this technology. They want to create guardrails that prevent the biggest part of the harms so that its potential benefits, enumerated here, can come to the fore. Now, as part of this announcement, the White House also said that it had been consulting with a huge array of countries on similar types of voluntary commitments. Those countries include Australia, Brazil, Canada, Chile, France, Germany, India, Israel, Italy, Japan, Kenya, Mexico, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Nigeria, the Philippines, Singapore, South Korea, UAE, and the UK. So I think the big question and the big skepticism is whether industry commitments really matter at all. The cynical take is that these are a way around other more strenuous regulation, and you see a lot of people on Twitter saying things like the EU is much stricter. The reality, of course, is that the EU AI Act and these voluntary commitments aren't really comparable things. One is legislation from an elected body, the other is a voluntary set of norms agreed upon by the leaders of an industry. A New York Times piece about the announcement recognizes that if nothing else, this type of commitment could prevent a countervailing force to the endless arms race that from a financial and markets perspective is gripping all these companies right now. Now, other things that people don't love, Gary Marcus tweets important agreement between White House and AI leaders, key omission, a requirement that companies disclose their data sets. As a society, we must insist on full data transparency to compensate content creators, to combat bias, and to discern limits on models. On the other side, some are finding that this sort of proactive and productive engagement with industry is a welcome switch from a White House which has seen in other areas a lot of contentiousness in that relationship. Wedbush analyst Dan Ives writes, The White House AI plan announced this morning we applaud and like the self-regulatory strategy for big tech in this AI arms race. As we have seen with black eye after black eye from Lena Khan and the FTC against big tech, this is the better route with AI in the U.S. in our opinion. The companies involved have also released a number of statements. Microsoft's Brad Smith writes, By moving quickly, the White House's commitments create a foundation to help ensure the promise of AI stays ahead of its risks. We welcome the president's leadership in bringing the tech industry together to hammer out concrete steps that will make AI safer, more secure, and more beneficial for the public. Mustafa Suleiman writes, Today we're proud to announce that working alongside the White House, we are partnering with other major AI labs to take a proactive and precautionary approach to the development of the very largest AI models. This announcement is a small but positive first step, but let's also be honest. The project of making truly safe and trustworthy AI is still only in its earliest phase. Concrete progress on technical safety and societal oversight needs to keep up. We see this announcement as simply a springboard and a catalyst for doing more. Now, along those lines of doing more, there will be a White House session later today that will include the participation of all these companies, including Brad Smith from Microsoft, Nick Clegg, the head of global affairs for Meta, Kent Walker, the head of global affairs for Google, Greg Brockman, a co-founder at OpenAI, Adam Salipsky of Amazon Web Services, Dario Amodi of Anthropic, and Mustafa Suleiman of Inflection AI. The TLDR for me on things like this is that they are ultimately more signaling than anything else. This is not meant, I don't believe, to take the place of real regulation. It's not meant even really to take the place of broader industry self-regulation. Instead, in some ways, this is closer to a more proactive version of signing a letter that says this type of approach to AI development is important, and we want to be a part of the conversation around how to do that well. I think when put in that context, it is a small but positive and meaningful step. Of course, it doesn't solve the big challenges of AI, but it wasn't meant to. And frankly, right now, anything that gets this set of actors cooperating and remembering that they have more incentives than just a commercial incentive to race past one another is, I think, a positive thing. If there's anything interesting that comes out of the White House meeting later today, you can be assured that I will tell you guys all about it next week. For now, I want to say thanks one more time for listening to the AI Breakdown. And until next time, peace.